we know that our patients uh, demands are different uh, like this and thus we differ from um, the western population fracture neck of femur the story is very typical once we fix and though we think that we have fixed it well there might be some mistake some in, in, inadvertent thing that might have happened like here some step is there on lateral uh, this fracture neck of femur is uh, bundle packed with some potential complications like here weight bearing was started 3 months later some collapse in a year's time avn was very obvious progressed to collapse and penetration of implant and then no choice than to replace that particular hip with a arthroplasty uh, our patients who uh, would need arthroplasty again with its uh, designated periodic uh, exp life expectancy so uh, non complications like non union or avn in younger patients in seen in almost 20 to 30% which is a very high incident considering um, good fixation good surgical expertise of course it is going down from 30% to almost uh, 15 to 12% today but then even today it is seen so for these uh, patients of delayed union or failed osteosynthesis treatment is based on age whether the neck is preserved or not subsequent vascularity of the femoral head which can be demonstrated even on plain x ray and then we are talking of either revision of implant or trying to salvage that femoral head by doing something like valgus or abduction osteotomy of course in elderly patients arthroplasty is the preferred option but then valgus or abduction osteotomy is a mainstay treatment even as a primary treatment in some kind of vertically oriented fractures we have all been trained to do this abduction osteotomy wherein uh, traditionally conventionally the shaft is pushed medially with some advantages but the major disadvantage being line of weight bearing is shifted medially and that's the major disadvantage according to me there are specific implants that are required for a uh, conventional osteotomy that's again a major disadvantage for undertaking a conventionally taught valgus osteotomy so that's uh, the double bent implant which was conventionally used for many many years the disadvantage being this uh, so called lateral uh, weight bearing is shifted medially thus putting more pressure on the knee joint on the medial aspect that's an example uh, six months post op failure of osteosynthesis probably a well vascularly vascularly preserved femoral head a subtrochanteric osteotomy rectifying correcting the vertical fracture line eight months post op some collapse is seen but the patient was still walking on it that's one year down the line with healing of osteotomy and it survived for 10 long years in that young patient of course after that uh, the implant was removed when i took the patient for a total hip replacement some cheesy material came out so i abandoned thr went back in again after one month after microbiology confirmation and replaced the uh, hip to an uncemented hip so the disadvantage of a conventional is medial compartment osteoarthritis which is found in more than 60% pre bend implant is required conversion to orthoplasty becomes a little difficult because of shifting of the shaft medially so uh, these three doyens of orthopedics uh, who are they you all know that uh, taught uh, us uh, some modification which they practice wherein shearing forces are converted into compressive by making vertical to horizontal gs kesar talks about abduction osteotomy using anatomic axis of femur 
and what we uh, do is anatomic axis which makes an angle of 84 degrees we have to use that anatomic axis of fever to find a horizontal line so that's the horizontal line which we are talking of and i will repeat this horizontal line horizontal line business again and again so please remember that what we are trying to do is that's the uh, axis of femur that's the horizontal line which is making an 84 degrees that's the verticality of uh, fracture line which is making a 70 degrees so we want to convert that into horizontal by doing an osteotomy uh, of 30 degrees that's the aim so what we do is so remaining portion is 40 degrees what we want to do is remove from a trochanteric area 40 degrees of wedge how do we do that we we'll look into it we have again uh, option of using various implants we prefer to use dhs which is well known to everyone and a ordinary 135 degrees of dhs can be used for this purpose of course we should know the entry point which can be uh, three or four types so you can have a higher entry point a little lower in the trochanteric region and a little lower and extremely lower so entry point we have to choose very carefully the tip of the dhs sectorally can lie again in the lower quadrant in the femoral head right in the middle or in the upper quadrant based on this we decide where our osteotomy will be located it should be located at a lesser trochanter level and we will see how it has to be done once we make our entry point at the trochanteric level we can swivel our femoral head along the line of osteotomy so what we are talking of is converting this dhs and making it flush to the uh, femoral femur so there are three variables that we are considering entry point which has to be near the base of trochanter end point as is seen here in the uh, lower quadrant and we have to calculate the angle of barrel plate which is uh, a plus b and in this case it's 40 degrees so osteotomy site again has to be at the lesser trochanter level that's how we calculate 40 degrees which ends in the middle of the shaft of the femur and we have to make sure that this bony bridge is maintained so when we push the uh, hip screw with the barrel in it down the femoral head will rotate along the axis of uh, the femur center of the femoral head with maintenance of this bony bridge once that is done everything else falls into place some examples 3 weeks old fracture neck of femur here we have not respected the bony bridge the bridge is lost there is collapse and there is slight medialization and because of this lost bony bridge what you see here is the femoral shaft is pushed medially which is not the desired way another example fresh fracture neck femur here we desire to do an abject abduction osteotomy and we have maintained this bony bridge the shaft of the femur does not get pushed medially the axis the femur axis is well maintained the horizontality is achieved from verticality and there is no further tilting good vertical axis so technical point restore mechanical axis using principles of angulation and translation that drawer pale has taught us so that's how he has taught us so that's the center of femoral head that should be considered as the axis where we will tilt the proximal fragment after osteotomy that's how it is done by doing abduction of the lower limb pushing the dhs down to create that uh, effective horizontality bony bridge is maintained intertrochanteric uh, osteotomy is preferred to earlier Uh, which i demonstrated subtrochanteric osteotomy because it's cancellous bone so faster healing better correction 
and if at all we decide to convert into total hip replacement a trochanteric osteotomy can be easily because you have maintained the uh, verticality uh, the axis of the shaft of femur so without any much changes it can be converted into total hip replacement very easily after removal of implant trochanter is brought down so you have that abduction abductor uh, muscles uh, been put to use disadvantage pressure on the femoral head some pain some amount of limb some amount of limb length discrepancy but all these things are preventable if you are accurate in measuring example 32 year young guy ipsilateral neck and shaft of femur both went into non union that's how it was uh, the chosen implant was a retrograde nail and a corrected uh, valgus osteotomy proximally look at the great union and salvage of femoral head that's been achieved three uh, 45 year old indian tribal one month old fracture vertical fracture well maintained bony bridge there horizontality achieved good union three month old fracture untreated some amount of neck resorption is there again after uh, a well established osteotomy and a good healing normal dhs normal screws normal implant that we are all used to fracture neck of femur one month old untreated look at the verticality x ray will demonstrate preservance of uh, trabecular pattern and that's an effective abduction osteotomy with dhs 45 year old 6 month old established non union look at the amount of neck resorption that is seen look at the uh, immediate post op after correction i was actually shocked to see on the lateral the huge amount of neck resorption that was seen i was so skeptical but uh, it started throwing callus once the mechanics are corrected it will all fall into place and will give rise to good bony union non union with broken implants treated with osteotomy some implant were removed some were uh, were impossible to remove i thought i will uh, really curate out the good femoral head i left it like that good healing good bony union good osteotomy union advantages dhs seems to be simpler reproducible useful salvage method for younger patients osteotomy has added advantage of correcting coxa vera though the buttressing effect of distal fragment improves the stability and this particular way of doing an osteotomy will have a good healing good predictability good reprodu reproducibility so it's an excellent procedure for dealer presentation non union type 3s we have to have accurate measurements pre operatively and reproduce them post operatively you have to master the technique so we have in credible india where indications are different people are different our disease pattern and bone is different prefer this method over considering arthroplasty straight away which has 10 15 years of survivorship this will give you an additional 10 15 years if at all you want to do uh, arthroplasty i hope i have left a pug mark on your thinking minds to consider uh, powell's valgus abduction osteotomy for those patients wherein you want to give a chance to make the femoral head survive i thank you very much